I've been wanting to do some um, RF design. Uh, in particular, I wanted to do microstrip design. So this is creating components like inductors and capacitors on PC boards. So using strip line designs and creating filters that you may be familiar with and things like that. It's the thing everybody calls the the voodoo magic, right? The black, the RF magic, where it's just a bunch of squ squiggly lines on a PC board, and and it, it does uh, it does electronics for you. Um, so um, I've looked at getting some tools to do that. Some people recommended Sonnet, uh, and I took a look at Sonnet. Um, I've looked at some other things um, because I have a, a communication with with um, Keysight. Um, they asked me if I was looking for anything and I said, yeah, I'd like to have some CAD tools for RF design. And, and they had kind of have the, one of the big packages, ADS and ADS would take me ages just to learn. <laughs> and they said, Oh, what you need, you need something called Genesis. And Genesis is kind of like a, a ADS for dummies. And it, it, it sounded great. So uh, Keysight was generous enough to give me a license for the tool for a year. Um, and let's take a look at the data sheet for this thing. Uh, it's called Pathwave RF Analysis, uh, and the short term was uh, Genesis. It says it's an affordable tool. Uh, affordable is uh, different for different people. Uh, I believe, you know, this is tens of thousands of dollars type of tool. Um, so... It's kind of in line with, with other tools, um, some much, much more expensive, of course. But I think this one you could get for under 20K, if I remember right. Um, let's see here. It's a safe investment. Okay. I'm going to kind of go through uh, through this kind of quickly, and then I'll show you the program. So th this box that you basically pay for, um, on the cheap end, you get just the core, and then you can add different functionality. You can add the synthesis module, the system module, RF circuit EM. So um, it will allow you to synthesize filters. You can just kind of give it parameters and it'll design the filter for you. That's what I'm interested in. And also it'll do actually a 3D uh, electromagnetic simulation. So it'll actually create a mesh uh, on your circuit, on your layout, and then it'll do Maxwell's equations and three dimensions and um, do things like that. It also can act like the program, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, for antenna, EasyNEC. Uh, so EasyNEC is kind of a real poor man's uh, EM simulator that solves Maxwell's equations by uh, doing a little tiny dipole segmentation. This does three, uh, two dimensional uh, tessellated uh, EM uh, simulations. And so we could take a look at that. Runs in Windows. Uh, la, 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 la. All right, here. A lot of marketing hype. <laughs> All right, so filter synthesis. So it'll do lumped analysis. So um, it's kind of a spice on steroids in that respect. So if you're familiar with spice, it sort of does all of those things. Um, it'll do uh, microstrip analysis, like this M filter analysis. So you can see there in the lower right is a little hairpin filter that's designed on a PC board, and then it'll do uh, uh, simulations on that, different types of uh, matching. So you can match uh, S parameters. Um, it'll do all kinds of stuff. It'll do uh, active stuff like spice. Um, Smith charts and S two one one. It does all the plots. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it has a a, ba a base a database of different vendor parts and stuff that you can put in for like filters and uh, just passives as well. Um, let's see here. Like I said, it does three three dimensional plots, two dimensional plots. Um, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's got a lot. <laughs> It'll do complete systems. Um, yeah, I could spend a lifetime uh, learning how to use this program. So hopefully I can do a few things without having to go down the rabbit hole too far. All right. Um, you can kind of see some EM stuff here where it's actually 
showing you f fields uh, on your PC board. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty fancy stuff. So here is the core of par parts that you're, you buy different levels. Like I said, you can buy more and more functionality depending on what you need to do. So at the basic level, there's the core, and then you can add on different circuit, different uh, packages like synthesis or system design or EM, uh, Maxwell's equation stuff. Um, I'm lucky to have the last one here that has every single, every single item in it. So I've got the uh, W5309B. Um, all right. So let's take a look at it. Okay. So we've opened it up. Uh, welcome to Wave uh, uh, Pathwave uh, RF Synthesis. So existing users, you can do things, new users. They have a bunch of videos and stuff that teach you how to do different things. So that's really, really nice. I'll just close this. So here's the opening page. It says, what do you want to do? Do you want to open up something you've just been working on? Do you want to do a new thing? Do you want to synthesize something? Um, let's just go ahead and open something up. Um, I think a fun one would be, well, there's examples too. So we'll open the exact example folder. There's tons and tons of examples. I think it was here. here. Uh, yeah, there we go. This is a good example to show you the first time. All right. So this is a, um, microstrip design. Um, and it happens to be a fifth order Chebyshev and its center frequency is somewhere around, I don't know, 20 to... 2250 or something like that. All right. So um, you can take a look at uh, the schematic. So this is sort of just the schematical representation. So every little line on the PC board will either be a transmission line or it'll, or it'll act like an inductor or it'll act like a capacitor. And so you kind of stick these all together, but you end up having a PC board in the end. So th that's interesting. So we can take this thing and we can take a look at, um, let's see here. All right, so I've clicked on the uh, filter here and it's this is where you can select what you would like. So this is what's known as an interdigital uh, type of filter. You may be more familiar with something like a hairpin. So if we click on hairpin, it'll automatically go to a hairpin design. But we can say we want to keep all of the design parameters. We just want to use a different topology. And so we've chosen hairpin. Now we can hit the optimize button. And you can see in the upper right, it's actually solving these equations and matching the design criteria that we have set and um, making a better fit. So let me stop this. So this is kind of a confusing uh Let's see, let's close down the hairpin and close this down and let's open this up. Um, so the dashed line here, this is the filter response, this dashed line is where we started. And then when I told it to optimize, it ended up with this solid line. And these boxes are actually the design criteria. It says, uh, this is where I want you to be. So it's it's trying to keep its filter in the in the kind of the gray area. All right. So we can go to settings here. Uh, let's see here. Pass band ripple. Where you can set the order. You can set a bunch of things. Um, where was the goal? Yeah, here's the goals. So let's. I'm clicking too many things here. Properties. Okay, so here are the design goals. So you can set where you want the bandpass to be. So let's say we want to have a 2250, 2250, yeah. So 2250. So let's say we want to design this actually for 2200 to 2300, okay? That's actually where we want the um, bandpass to be. That's what this S11 is. Um, and here we want S21 to be the same. 
2200 and 2300. So these are the parameters that the optimizer is going to try to target. All right. And then we can set some uh, other things. So you can see that I'm setting where I want the bandpass to be, but then you want to put the rejection someplace else, right? So let's set the rejection here to, oh, I say, uh, 2121. See, that's these, let me get this out of the way. This box here and this box here is what we needed need to define next, okay? And so we, we are, we're starting at 2200, so let's back up. So let's say we want to have, um, oh, it doesn't really matter. We'll just put this here at uh, 2000. And then this one we will have at 2500. Okay, and let's just say, okay, our boxes should move. Yeah, there, see our boxes moved. I'm telling it I want a real narrow filter and then these are these red things are here basically the keep out lines all right and um let's see if it can actually do that um and we will go back to tools uh well, let's see actions run optimization so here here it's trying and you see it it narrowed our filter down right and so let me stop the analysis so it narrowed the filter down here and then it tried to keep out of these out of these red boxes. And so the filter comes down. So if I run it a second time, then the before and the after will be almost the same and we can look at it better. So this is the filter it came up with. So it has a pretty nice narrow rise and fall, okay? So you say, oh, great, that's exactly what I want. And then you can say, well, what does that look like? Okay, so we can take a look at the schematic. And here it is. Now you can see everything's kind of jagged because it's optimized it um, and didn't care about the actual layout. Each segment is done mathematically. Um, you just need to clean up the actual layout when you're done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit uh, Control A, that will select everything, and then we will just say connect everything up. And there we go. So now it's a nice pretty, uh, now it's a nice pretty design. And uh, I think this thing here is just the, the ground plane underneath. And do I know how to get rid of that? I don't think I know how to get rid of that. But we would we would increase the brown the ground plane underneath for the for this whole thing. Um, so it it does have uh, layout tools. Let's see here, layout. Where's all the layout tools? Uh, da, 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 da. There's our schematic. I'll show you the schematic. Just a bunch of inner a bunch of little interleaf pieces. Uh, let's see here, layout. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to run the layout yet, but you can see it's it's doing what we want it to do. And the optimization is the thing that you're paying all the money for, right? That is that is just super, super cool. You don't, you're not guessing, you're actually, and look, look it's, it's doing even steps here, right? It's doing a very clever design, right? It's, it's stepping the impedance down um, and changing it. You can actually set a whole bunch of parameters here um, when you're doing the, uh, Let's see, where's the goal? Here's the goal. Um, general uh, goals, variables, method. Yeah, variables. You can set, you know, what type of PC board you have, how big a copper you have, all that kind of stuff in a different different section. Um, Let's see here, current wizard, blah, 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 blah. I think it's actually in the, uh, I think actually it's in the uh, filter section. Here we go, properties. Yeah, so like I said, we chose a hairpin this time. And there are options, you could say, um, uh, the actual, resonators so that there's 50 ohms going in but the resonators themselves are actually 60 ohms i don't know the theory behind that but you can change the resonator maybe to like say 75 ohms um and you can say optimize and then all of the 
um, the uh, all of the interdigitated stuff got thin because that changed the impedance of those. Thin. So now they're 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 uh, seventy five ohms instead of sixty ohms, and we can go back to sixty ohms, uh, which is more typical, I guess. Um, so yeah, there's just tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff you can do in this thing. Um, there are some pretty fairly different. This is kind of a combination where you have some strip line components and some. Uh, these are these are capacitors, so you have uh, lumped element capacitors with strip line inductors and some interdigitated cross coupling and stuff. So yeah, there's there's all kind. All kinds of filters. This one has uh, vias at the end, so the ends are grounded. Uh, elliptical is weird looking. Quarter wave coupled looks weird. Uh, edge coupled, yeah. This this one's this one's pretty uh, pretty classic. Um, I don't know how to change that to ground plane underneath, but doesn't matter. Um, we can, or does it matter? I don't know. <laughs> we can optimize that one. Ding, 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 ding. And uh, yeah, this is really, really interesting. So let's stop this one and take a look at its uh, its response. And you can see the shape of the filter is a little bit different, right? It's a little bit narrower at the top. So that that that's an interesting design choice. Anyway. I'm just showing off. Um, this is going to be a great tool. And I, what I want to do is I want to design some filters. I want to take the um, the actual layout that is created um, and let's see here. How do I go back? How do I go back? Here we go. Um, you take this layout. You can export it. You can bring it into KiCad, actually lay out a board actually physically make the board, bring it in, measure it in the lab. So that's what I'm, that's my goal is to design a bunch of these things and try to take some of the mystery out of this uh, weird voodoo stuff.